Hello my friends, I'm Sarah. Welcome to Grace My Space. Today we're gonna do a little bit of a selfie style video. We have done so much. So I've already done like a phase one video, I'll link it up here for you, with our plan for what we're gonna do for our 20 acres of land, including some landscaping. The last month or two, we have put those plans into action and I'm really excited to show you the progress that we've made. It's starting to actually look like someone lives here. Now, while most of our house still looks like this on the exterior, we are still in process on the addition. I'll give you updates on that and our long-term plans for everything happening outside. Now, as a quick reminder, in my last video, Aaron and I built and installed these beautiful raised beds from Vigo Garden. And in hindsight, I was very short-sighted. I only selected two and I decided I needed more. So I'm really excited to partner with Vigo Garden once again. This time I wanted to add some dimension with this beautiful navy blue modern raised L-shaped bed. Here is the 22nd edition of the installation and the assembly. These came together very easily. As you can see, I did it on my own, even though they're very large. I did two different ways and I'm going to share my opinion on which was best. The key to success, a level ground. The first bed I built out by where we're actually going to be installing them because I thought they're big, they're heavy, I don't wanna have to carry it to the location so I'm gonna build it on site. That was completely wrong to do. It was so uneven, even after I tried to level the soil and it made it really difficult to build these. I built the first one in three hours. I built this one in 45 minutes because I'm on a level ground. now. Do we have the challenge now of carrying this very large bed to its location? Yes. Was it worth it to be determined? Worth it to me. Might not be worth it to Aaron. So the system is really ingenious. It's just panels and corners. That's all that it is. Panels and corners and screws. And it makes it so easy to put it together. And I did it by myself. It's recommended to use two people, but it is possible to do it with just one. And now I gotta do the finishing touches, adding some caps and some support bars. Even when you have the wrenches that oscillate correctly and like you don't have to take it out, put it back in, turn, take it, you just do this, I don't know, ratcheting. Even if you have the wrenches that ratchet, not as good as this. Any size bolt or nut fits into this so much faster. You don't have to switch tools, you need one tool for every single size nut. It's amazing. We are complete. Now we just have to put it in place. Easy peasy. This modern design is gonna be such a beautiful focal point for the garden. They are double walled, powder coated, galvanized steel, commercial grade, appropriate for commercial or residential. I love that the double wall provides that additional insulation so that it has a more stable temperature for your plants. It's 100% recyclable metal. Those rounded corners also ensure extra safety when leaning over the edges. It is beautiful. Now let's get it installed. Now, if you're wondering what the verdict is on assembly and installation, my opinion, they were extremely easy to assemble on a level ground. You see Aaron's little smirk because he's thinking, what did she do? But this was the better choice. Now, if you have a distance to move these from where you have assembled them and you don't have a tractor or at least five guys, might not be the best option. This ended up working out great. Thankfully, we have the equipment needed to move them. They are very heavy, and so I would highly recommend building them on site if you're able to or 
asking a crew to come over and help you get them where you need them. But once they were in place, I love how they frame out our existing Vigo garden beds. I like the contrast with the dark navy, almost looks like black in certain lights against the white. Really frames out this space and I'm continuing to build this design in my head. All of the Vigo packaging is compostable. So all this cardboard, it's gonna go right in here. I cut back my fabric soil so that beneficial worms and such can come through. And we're gonna just put this down. It's gonna compost over time, be a good weed prevention. Since these Vigo raised beds are 32 inches tall, I don't wanna fill them fully with soil. That would be a lot of soil and it would also compact over time and not be the best base for plants. So I lay down a layer of logs, a layer of sticks, a layer of organic material like leaves or straw, a layer of compost, and then a layer of soil. And that is a really great base for our plants. With all of the raised beds finally in place, time to plant. I'm going to do a mixture of perennials, annuals, vegetables, whatever I need each year into these, but I always like to add some perennials to my raised beds, not only for pollination, but also just for guaranteed color. Now we're gonna circle back to how those beds are filling out as they grow, but let's hop over to this back bed. This is where I left it last time, just getting weed fabric down to kill off all of the grass that was underneath. And now we're actually going to create a beautiful landscaped hillside with our addition there in the background. As you can see, this hillside already had a stamped concrete edging at the base, but I wanted to add some more hardscape to it. Our land has a bunch of these piles of rock. I don't know if farmers in the past have tilled them out of fields and left it behind, or if the previous owner did something with them, but they are like gold, and so we took advantage. Now, the goal with these rocks was so that this kind of growth, I can either pull or spray and kill it and have a uh, easy to weed border here versus having plants coming all the way down and also I wanted stepping stones in various spots on the hillside to have something to stand on that was sturdy since it's a hill and we're not terracing it because that would just be a lot of money um, for me to have some stability if I need to get in there and weed and not fall down the hill <laughs> main goal right there. Once we got all of the rocks in place, I headed to the nursery. I want to install mostly perennials in this space. It is intended to be a flower garden, not a vegetable garden. And so I added boxwood, I added hydrangeas, I have a lot of sedum and salvia and catmint and different grasses. I really wanted to add a lot of ground covers as well so that it helps with weed prevention, but I ran into a quick snag. The first hole I go to dig, snake. I don't do snakes. We're in Michigan, so there's not a lot of poisonous snakes like you would be concerned about in the South, but I don't know anything about snakes, so I'm not risking it. But I mean, I gotta keep going. So, be brave. Snake crisis averted. I was able to plant everything. It took me several weeks to actually plant it all. Even though it looks like I'm planting it all in one day, it was a lot of backbreaking work and I am so grateful that it's done and over with and we got some mulch down. But first, let me show you one element that I absolutely love that I struggled to get other people to see the vision for. Now, for some reason, no one seems to be able to see the potential of these steps. At least the men that I've shown these to. These steps are amazing. Why are we not loving them? I'm going to clean them up with the pressure washer. I'm going to clean up these bricks, or these stones as well. And the border. It's going to look like it's brand new. It's going to look amazing. Don't doubt the process.
I'll hop back over to that bed and show you how it ended up with all the planting and mulch. But real quick, I also wanna show you what I did on our exterior with the barn. We had these window boxes already installed. They needed some love. So I sanded off the existing paint and I repainted them. And while I absolutely love and adore real flowers, especially outside, I couldn't take on one more thing that I needed to water. And so I decided instead to install some outdoor artificial flowers for the beauty and the convenience. And I really love how they turned out. Very simple to do. I will link up all of the different artificial flowers that I used in these boxes. They look gorgeous, especially driving up the driveway. The barn is the first thing that you see. And I'm really happy that they'll look this way year round or all summer long without any maintenance or upkeep. We only had a few perennials already planted, including this gorgeous group of peonies. That's all that's coming up. We have this entire hillside that we need to reseed after ripping it out, and this entire backyard that we still need to plant grass and potentially do a fire pit in. I'd love to hear your ideas if you have a vision for what this space could be. In our flower bed on that hillside, it's finally done and ready to just enjoy. And I love how it came together. I did a lot of really whimsy flowers, boxwood to give it structure and some greenery year round, hydrangeas in the very back that will get tall and kind of frame the back half. I did these pincushion flowers as well as lots of catmint and salvia, a lot of sedum and lavender and lamb's ear, which are all more drought tolerant. And I just really like to have this kind of a whimsy, flowy garden, especially on a hillside where it can kind of just, you know, flow in the wind. We did end up adding another row of rocks to help keep the mulch in place. And I love how it turned out. I cannot wait for it to grow in. Obviously this is freshly planted and can look kind of sparse on year one, but it's going to fill out beautifully. Now imagine in the background, that's actually where our living room addition and deck are going to be. The deck will take up that entire space that is currently dirt and come all the way up to those stone steps. Now let's check in on the raised beds from Vigo. I planted the white beds about a month ago. They're going to have pumpkins growing over that trellis eventually. They are coming up very well and I'm excited about that. I also planted the L-shaped modern beds more recently with some perennials. I also added some potatoes to that space and I'm going to keep adding through the summer. I haven't fully planned that yet. If you have a favorite flower or vegetable, drop it in the comments as a recommendation for what I could add to those beds. Beds. I love how the sparse amount of things that I put in here already is filling in very well. The plants are absolutely thriving in these raised beds from Vigo Garden and they are so much easier to weed than being low to the ground. I will link these up for you specifically in the caption. Make sure to check out their full range of raised beds and other gardening accessories. So I'm hoping that by the time I share my next video, this view behind me will have a structure, it'll actually be a building, it won't just be the foundation, and I'll have a lot more to show for the rest of this land. Thanks so much for watching, I will see you next time.